Hey guys, welcome to Overcrest. I'm Chris. And I'm Jake. And we have another, I guess, is it another poisonous episode? Another heavy episode. Oh, yeah, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did we, so this is part two of our leaded this, fuel episode. This, this, uh, I didn't even know, what did we name that one? Was it clever? Uh, got lead. Got lead. Got lead, yeah. So it's, part two of got lead. Yeah, part two of got lead. It's, uh, it's a heavy metal episode. This thing really, really, <laughs> no, 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 that doesn't no, work. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, before we get into it, though. Yeah. Did you know that I already had comments correcting me the day after we released or recorded? Oh, no. So you need to do some retractions. On, no, but not even that. The point of that was if you were one of our Overcrest Drivers Club members, uh-huh. you could correct me way sooner than everyone else. <laughs> you almost get to tell Jake he's wrong as fast as me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, it was a minor correction. I mentioned uh, like the... the uh, the Bentley blower cars and like the the catalytic V16 was trying to make more power and some yeah. Well, actually, they were trying to make the engines run smoother. Ah, uh, because you don't want to feel it or anything. Yeah, and smoother Which you makes can... sense. It's like a luxurious car. Yeah. You ever those? I love those low compression engines. Just what low compression engines? It's like the motor in your truck, for example. That flathead or that. It's oh yeah. Just yes. the low compression seven and a half to one engines. Yeah. You just look at them, and if you were if you couldn't hear, it would they were they are not running <laughs> because they are so they don't smooth. vibrate. They just nothing. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, if that is more like they just make any they make don't make any noise. You hear the exhaust, and it's just like <gasps> you know, they just <laughs> there's no distinct explosion. No, it's no, just there's nothing. <sighs> and I kind of like I know that though, that's because the fuel that they had wasn't very good, so they had to yeah. run the lower compression. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of in that way, it's bad but looking back in hindsight i'm like man those things run really smooth all those old trucks and everything just it's cherry i like it. i like no. it no not no, good no as we learned from the previous episode that's why they added i lead. know i know but it's still kind of that wasn't good smooth anyways the whole point was go over to overcrest.com slash drivers club if you're not already a drivers club member you can see us that's before right. everybody else all of these are recorded yeah. so we have video as well which do you think you're getting a lot more value with the video well, it's just early access. Everybody just gets early access to everything. Okay. Is kind of what it is. Everybody gets early access. Plus, we need to do another Overcrest short, which yes. we'll probably do within the next couple of weeks. Get yep. exclusive content. We gave uh, Drivers Club members first access to new merch drops. Correct. We just did that last week, so you have first access to that. So there's lots of little benefits. Plus, it's a feel good thing. You get to support the show. It's five bucks, ten bucks, whatever you want to do. There's a few different options. There is a big back catalog yeah. of. Over yeah, yeah. I need to go through. I need to collate because we're. I've gotten behind on collating some of the the uh, the exclusive stuff. There's got to be at least twenty to thirty something Probably episodes at least, yeah. of exclusive drivers yep. club only content. So exactly. Dri- uh, Overcrestproductions.com slash club of drivers. Nope, that's, that's not right. No, but now you got to add it as a back <laughs> <it>. You remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, let's get into the episode here. So, leaded gasoline, as we know, was introduced on the market. In February of 1923, that's when we you have, could go to a pump and get leaded gasoline. Do we have like a, an average, like a, a bell curve of the IQ of yes. the American pipe? Yep, we're going to get there. Okay, yeah. yes. Uh, motorists liked that the extra boost the gasoline gave, and GM and DuPont joined Standard Oil Company of New Jersey, which is now ExxonMobil, in a joint venture to create the Ethel Corporation. In 1924, the biggest problem at this point was the manufacturing process of TEL was nowhere near safe. Part of the processing required workers to open boiling lead reactors and oh, no. squeeze semi-molten lead between grates with shovels and sometimes just their boot. Just, just, just <laughs> shove it down in there. Yeah, just step on it a just bunch. Just mash it down the drain. Yeah. Seven workers died between September 1923 and the fall of 1924 in GM's Daytona, Ohio, and DuPont's southern New Jersey factories. But no one outside the Ethel Partnership understood the significance of these apparently disconnected industrial accidents. Oh, that's just... People being unsafe, Chris. Yep, it's yep, their own nothing, fault. Nothing their own going dumb on fault. here. There's, so you're saying there's no OSHA? Yes, like where you have no, to put up the little yellow diesel? Definitely like was not. Dangerous lead well, spill? Well, even if they here. had OSHA there, OSHA wouldn't be like that this is dangerous because they it was all approved. We're yeah. all good. Yep, as long as, all the, good. as long as the government says it's safe, it's safe. Right. It's fine. Yes, yeah, so then as Standard Oil you started know, I just, up. Small tangent. I always find it interesting that for some reason, people will trust... When government says something safe, 
versus if a company says something is safe. Well, it, the company the, was the one that led to all this I understand. mess in the first place. Of course, but then all the company does is lobby the government to say it's safe. Right. So yes. it's like- You can't trust anyone, you can't what trust you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can only trust your own common sense, which in that age, if you were had a bunch of leaded paint and, and fuel around, maybe, right? Maybe common sense would say it's fine. Yeah, maybe your common sense wasn't very good. Well, also your IQ is detrimental because of the lead, which means your common sense was also yeah, yeah, all bad deals. Uh, Standard Oil started up a new and even more hazardous to EL refining operation in northern New Jersey when five workers died in one week. From lead poisoning. I wonder if they had this. Is, that, is this the era where the sign on the wall came from? There's not been an accident in however many days. Yeah, this one would be very bad. Yeah, five days. Yes. Oops. The lead poisoning was so severe that it wasn't even recognized as poisoning at all. Well, Thomas, clearly that couldn't have been from lead exposure. Those men just died on the spot. The sad truth is that those men who died on the spot had it better than the alternative. Quote, these men probably went insane because they worked too hard. That was a quote by one of the uh, proponents of leaded fuel and one of the manufacturers. That same fall, several workers had to be subdued and put into straight jackets right there on the floor. Are you kidding me? Yep. Holy shit. They were black and blue from uncontrolled muscle spasms, exhibiting paranoia and delusional behavior, such as cringing from phantoms or snatching at imaginary winged insects. The affected workers could be suddenly violent or suicidal. They Just also, jump right into the vat of yep, lead. They also had blue lines across their gums, a typical indicator of lead poisoning. But the behavioral symptoms were unlike any presented in previous lead poisoning cases. So where's the cover-up? They There's just... Gotta, I mean, there has to be... I mean, how dumb are we that we don't see a correlation? It's not like somebody working at the steel mill has blue line gums snatching at bugs and falling into vats of molten lead. Right? Like, it's just, it's right. not really happening. So, logically, you would go, wow, there must be something wrong here. What is the variable that's different at this place where people are going insane, hopping up and down like mad idiots? working too hard, Chris. Working too hard. Why are the lead people, or refiners... <laughs> the lead people! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> why are the lead people, uh -huh. or, or the refiners at the lead place, why, why are they working so much harder than the people at the steel mill? Are they yeah, working no, longer I, hours? It, no, it makes no sense. It makes, you're right. It literally makes, it makes no, no sense. sense. Yeah, None. so they had their blue lines. That was lead poisoning. Behavioral symptoms are crazy. They just, yeah. It, when the first worker died in the hospital, writhing in agony, a horrified county medical examiner called the district attorney who began an investigation. Okay, so this guy's finally seen enough. Yes. The, the difference is now, if someone arrives at a hospital room writhing in angry in agony with blue gums and they're yeah. snatching at bugs, that shit is on Twitter instantly. <laughs> right? And then there's like, then there's 75 million experts that are trying to diagnose what this guy's problem Maybe is. Maybe Kanye Everybody, just has lead poisoning. It's <laughs> Very well could be. Somebody Speaking should check his gums. Of Twitter. Check his gums. So this alerted the news media and on October 27th, accounts of the odd new kind of occupational hazard were carried on the front pages of newspapers around the world. Standard Oil had no official comment at first, although one refinery supervisor later reported as suffering from lead poisoning famously said, these men probably went insane because they worked too hard. So that There's was that quote. That was their official stance. Who is, who is hiring the guys investigating this? You know what I mean? Like, who's hiring the people that are saying, who's paying them off? Yeah. Who's paying off people who are like, nah, no, no, no. They just, <laughs> they just work too hard. It makes no sense. I don't. Yeah. No. You know what does make sense, though, Chris? What? Petrol box. Petrol box makes sense. So, if you listened last lead week. Free. It is lead free. <laughs> almost guaranteed. I don't know what they put in there, but it's not lead. It's an unleaded petrol box. You know why? Because that would just be too heavy to ship. It would, yeah. It yeah, would cost so much we money. can't be doing that. Yeah. No, but if you listened last week and you haven't bought this as a gift for someone in the last week, I'm going to hound you again. Yes, do it. It makes petrol a box. great Christmas. Christmas gift. It's a monthly service. You can buy as many months as you want. Yeah. Are you going to buy just one month? Be a cheapskate? You could. Or you could buy the <laughs> six-month setup. That's what I did for my dad last year. Yeah. And he loved it. And he misses not getting a petrol box. Oh, because you're a bad son and didn't buy it. I only again. did six months. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do another six months. It's easy. <laughs> it's such an easy gift. Just it really yeah. is. You know, and you get all the cool 
detail stuff and you get it tools beat the gift stuff. card. Oh, it you know what the I gift did? card for sure. Dude, you bought tools. I yeah. saw. Uh, we'll talk about that. We, we'll talk about that on the news episode. Okay. But the we'll only t- thing I will say that is uh, kind of paramount to this, detriment Par- to this, parallel, parallel. I don't know. Man. Makes sense with this. I my vocab is not working today. Okay, well it's all that lead poisoning. Yeah, keep on going. Eat lead uh, chips. Regardless, oh yeah, I was trying to organize a new toolbox, and I realized that some of the cool things that I wanted came in a petrol box, and I was like, oh, those are really cool. I'm gonna buy more of those, and I wouldn't have sure. known had I not used those from petrol box. Great gift. Head over to petrol box. No, I'm sorry, my petrolbox.com and use the code overcrest at checkout for six dollars off your first month you can get the twenty dollar a month or the 39.95 a month again a gift for yourself even gift for someone else it's great you know how i know my wife loves me tell me uh it's maybe last night or the night before i go what's for dinner uh-huh. and she goes here you go and she gave me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich what okay with, with, what? Crunch, with crunchy peanut butter and strawberry because she was listening she was listening it was awesome I was going to say, that's it, a terrible dinner. What does it, it that is, mean? A, she said it. I was like, what? Why? What? Yeah. And then she's it, like, It was oh. the wrong peanut butter. I think the peanut butter company <laughs> went out of business. I can't find the peanut butter company that made well, the peanut butter. Well, just go to Trader Joe's and get the weird separated organic one. Ugh, I don't it's like probably it. probably close. Have I you tried like it again? It. No, I haven't tried it again. Just try it on toast. Try that. And try I have to toast. stir it first, huh? Of course. It takes a little. It's, you'll have to burn 0.07 calories yeah. to access the goodness of the real peanut butter. I, no, no. Okay. All so right. back anyway. to our lead refinery. Internally, the men knew exactly what was going on. And That's what I'm saying. Involved. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yes. Yeah, when a delegate... Here's the thing. If what? they knew, all their observers probably knew, scientists probably knew, yeah. and the people that were investigating and giving the reports must have gotten paid off. Just like the cigarette companies did. They paid the doctors or they had their own doctors. Have you ever seen the movie Thank You for Smoking? Oh, it's phenomenal. What a great movie. I should movie. watch that again. That yeah, was a they good should, one. They should do that. Thank you for using our unleaded fuel and do a movie on that. Leaded fuel. Yes. yes. Uh, when a delegation of engineers visited the Standard Refinery in September 1924, this is only like one, less than one year after they opened, by the way. They found a safety precautions being taken at the Standard Refinery to be grossly inadequate. But publicly, the company doubled down on denying the dangers by October 30th, 1924, with the known death toll at five. Oh, I didn't even notice that when I wrote that. The known death toll at yeah, five. Who knows know. how much it actually was. Yeah. They probably carried the bodies out and threw them in the parking lot and oh. said it didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, they had a heart attack. This is the Industrial Revolution, or shortly after, rather. And it was, a t- it was an interesting Industrial time. Revolution was like 1800s. No. No, it was the early 1900s. Was it? I think oh, so. Okay. Great. I think now I got to look it up. I think so I don't... you were grossly wrong. Uh, but do you remember from last week, our good friend Thomas Migley, the one who actually discovered lead? Well, Thomas oh, Migley. Oh, you are totally right. I am wrong. What am yeah. I thinking of? No clue. Yeah, I don't know either. 1830s? What? Yeah, it was like 1820 to 1840. Yep. So, yeah, cool. 1830s. What? I... Ha! Yeah. Ha! You're right for me. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I so, get it. You're right. Our friend Thomas Migley. He was the one who basically designed and figured out the lead works from last week, if you remember. He himself was introduced to a press conference at Standard Headquarters at 26 Broadway. To impress the journalists, Migley poured a thick stream of a clear liquid over his hands and then dried it off with a handkerchief. He then held a bottle of liquid under his nose for a minute and he insisted that the fumes could have no such effect and was observed in the victims and hailed a short time. This, this is fine. Look, this is lead right here. This I've, is fine. I've tried that at the TSA where you walk up and you've got your water bottle and you're like, look, I just, I'm drinking it. It's yeah, fine. It's, it's fine. It's not, it's it's not fine. explosive. Yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> that's really funny. It doesn't that work. Get that. No, it doesn't yeah, work. They don't care. No. <laughs> Throw it I, away. I will tell you, though, this liquid was most certainly not TEL, the lead liquid stuff, as Thomas knew firsthand its dangers. The year prior, he had to take an extended leave to recover from lead poisoning. He found, quote, that my lungs have been affected and that it is necessary to drop all work and get a large supply of fresh air. For some reason, it said he went down to Florida for like four months. I don't know why that's where you go to recover from lead poisoning. But clearly, he wasn't just like drinking and washing his hands with this lead stuff right. after knew. that happened. He knew. Right? Yeah. Nonetheless, Such it was- evil, man. Such evil. Like pure 
The thing is, is if you don't see the victim or and you can disassociate yourself with it's the victim. It's victimless crime. Yeah. Except he saw all the factory workers alone who were dying from it. And at that point, they had to maybe suspect, like, well, we're making a lot of this. There's a lot of this stuff going out the door. Right. At some point, it's going to catch yeah, up. Yeah, what's the cumulative effect? Exactly. Yeah. Let me get to that because it is nuts. So, yeah. Nonetheless, it was insisted this lead additive was safe for motorists because it was diluted, so diluted in gasoline. It would never be a problem. Yeah, it's measured in parts per million. That's not true. That's a lie. No. You are a liar. No, I'm not. He's lying. You lie. Liar. Who lies? Oh, lies. <laughs> are you calling me a liar? You sit on a throne of lies. That's a lie. Liar. He's a liar. The demon is a liar. A liar? That lying bitch. Liar! I'm cutting you off. <laughs> <laughs> goes for another minute was... 30 seconds. Okay, okay. So that, that, he was lying. He, he was clearly liar. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going. I got to stop that. Okay. <laughs> so meanwhile, there was publicity war going on in the public eye. Fought between the lead industry and independent scientists on the harms of lead. So you were talking about the cover-up? It was a PR, basically, war going back and forth. The popular belief was that even if lead is harmful, it's naturally occurring, Chris. It's oh, an it's, element it's, in the universe. It's organic. It is. It's <laughs> fine. Thomas Migley himself was fond of saying that even Adam himself had lead in his body. It's nothing new. Yeah. It's, it's, Adam and Eve, <laughs> it's the first man, he had lead with him. Yeah. It's, it's no problem. Yeah, just, I don't know why you guys are saying this is bad. Just probably took a bath in uranium as well. Yeah, it's fine. The question became not whether lead was bad, but how much lead was bad. Right. Studies funded by the lead industry, mind you, came up with a figure of 80 micrograms per deciliter in the body. I don't know what that means. Well, a microgram is one one thousandth of a gram. Okay. So 80, 80 bit per 10 liters of blood. How, how many liters of blood do you have in your body? A lot. A lot. 10 liters? I don't think you have 10 liters of blood in your body. No, but I'm saying a deciliter is 10 liters. Okay, so... Or is it a tenth of a liter? A, so, deci a liter, deciliter... I think it's 10 liters. Okay, so one microgram per 10 liters. I don't have a good, like, way of showing or an analogy for this, but they said 80. Just We're remember, like, the, remember Jake, the figure 80. Jake, what? We're on episode 380-something. You should know that I'm going to want to know <sighs> the answer to that question. I'm going to want to know. Hold what on. Is, what one is... Microgram per deciliter. I'm gonna look up a deciliter. Deciliter is example. one tenth of a liter. Yeah, that's exactly what not I said. Not, oh, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> if not, you were to split a paperclip into one million pieces, one of those pieces would be the weight of a microgram. Oh my god! One million pieces! <laughs> wow! That's not very much. No. <laughs> so one millionth of a paperclip. In a tenth of a liter. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's not much at not all. Not very much at but all. But 80. 80 of these millionth of a paper clip. Okay. Right? Okay. So, so that's the figure that the lead industry was like, that's fine. Right there? That? Obviously. You know how small that is? That's a millionth of a paper clip, Chris. It sounds pretty small. It does. They established this by basically dosing subjects with lead and giving them normal physical exams. Up until the subject started showing symptoms, they concluded... The level of lead was safe. Are you sure this isn't Volkswagen? No, we did <laughs> cover that though. But do you see the inherent problem with this test? That's akin to me lining up shots of vodka in front of you and asking you to keep drinking until you start getting drunk. Perhaps by the fifth or sixth shot in a row, you might start to get wobbly. So then I would say that, well, five shots of vodka a day are fine. Yeah, but only... It's, it's you know what I mean? Like much, by the you time have, you exhibit yeah, symptoms, yeah, yeah. It takes, you're way beyond bad. Yeah, if you take five shots, it's you're puking in 40 minutes. Yeah, or, but oh, five is fine because you didn't get wobbly until yeah, the sixth. They kick them out the door and have them throw yep. up outside in the bushes. Yeah, on the other hand, independent researchers, many at universities, were attempting to discredit these claims by looking at environmental factors. One such study was attempting to age the universe by studying the rate of decay of plutonium into lead. So this is a totally unrelated research project that this really smart guy at some university had. Right. And he said, okay, we can try to date the universe because we know that plutonium decays at a set rate. Right. And usually it decays into lead. So if we look at the amount of plutonium and lead or vice versa, we can figure out how old the universe is. 
The problem was, he found, that the lab was completely contaminated with lead. He's trying to isolate and look at lead. He's like, it's everywhere. Quote, it was on our shoes. It was in the air. It was even in our hair when we tried to study. It's just... From the gas being burned. It's basically COVID. He estimated (laughs) that North America possessed over 1,000 times the normal or naturally occurring concentration of lead. And this is only a few years after they started using leaded fuel. So you could like go outside and swab your siding and it's like, yep, there's lead. All of it. Jesus. Yes. A thousand times the natural occurrence. Going in people's gardens. Which going again, the crops. even Adam himself, first man, he had lead. So we're basically Not digging up lead out of the ground yep. and ejecting it into the atmosphere. Well, I didn't get into the process they used. It was a chemical process to like isolate and redo the lead. Yeah. Yeah. So it was refined. They're not just digging it up, but yes. Yeah, but we're basically fire hosing lead into the atmosphere to have all it, of it. In, just, just to have it rain yeah. down on It'd everybody's like, head. Yeah. In their it's, food, yeah. on the animals that we're gonna eat, it's in great. the crops, yeah. everything. This study, however, that this guy came up with didn't make headlines. Since the university was funded in part by major donors who worked in the lead industry, Chris. Yeah. Let's qu- kibosh that immediately. Yep. It's like the Carnegies and all these guys who were in the big industry heads and you know, they make huge donations and get their name on a building at the yeah, university. Absolutely. Well, they're not going to make that study known. Yeah, higher education is totally transparent. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. obviously. Good, good, good. Okay. Until the 1970s, nearly all the research on lead poisoning was focused on adults and aimed at avoiding occupational problems, right? So they're like, well, we know people have died in manufacturing lead, Chris. Right. So that's what we're going to focus on. Right. We, you know what? Us at Big Lead, we're responsible. Big Lead. We take care of our own. Our responsibility, we take it seriously. It's a very heavy responsibility. It is a heavy, heavy subject. Yes. So is the density of the of the element part of the issue? Yes. Big so time. it's just hugely dense. So even yeah, a small it's, amount. I is, don't know the medical reasons, and I should call up my wife, but basically, like they talk about heavy metal exposure. Yes. It's not just lead. There are other elements that are considered heavy metals, and it's very, very bad for you. Just because because it's so dense. Something was, about breaking it down or absorbing it or your body just can't. Yeah. That's my understanding of it. Rudimentarily. Send all complaints to Jake <laughs> at overcrestproductions.com. Actual email, please do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, all these studies that they did, you know, basically funded by Big Lead, mm-hmm. were all aimed at adults and looking at how we can make them safer in the industry. But children came to be recognized as a more vulnerable because they're in their developmental stages and they're more uh, subject to neurologic damage from lead poisoning. In 1974, psychiatrist Herbert Needleman and colleagues found that teeth made better markers of past lead exposure than the blood samples that had been relied upon in the past. So they used to basically take lead sample or blood samples and they'll yeah. measure the lead per deciliter. Yeah, but that's not where the lead is is living. Right. They found out that in bone, it's a better marker of how much lead is actually in a person. Yeah, it's like looking at the rings of a tree rather than the sap. Right. So what do they do? You can actually, teeth are accessible because children. Their baby teeth fall out. Exactly. You don't have to like cut off a finger and send it in, right? (laughs) You can just like baby teeth. So they collected teeth from 2,500 primary school children. That's one way to call the tooth fairy the tooth fairy. Yes. Which, fun fact, here's another tangent, or perhaps it's not fun, it's disgusting, but uh, this was not the first mass teeth collection of its kind. Yeah, the Tooth Fairy. No, Chris, not the Tooth Fairy. The government. <laughs> both both give away free money. <laughs> Do they, though? Uh, yes. <laughs> Do you have to pay taxes on your Tooth Fairy allowance? No, but they both give away money for yeah. doing nothing. No, listen to this, though. I found this fascinating. Here in the 50s and 60s, the U.S. and Canadian governments collected over 100,000 baby teeth in order to study another poison. What's that marketing campaign look like? Oh, they, I, oh, I wish I pulled up a photo of it because they had like these big campaigns about like save people, send in your baby's teeth. What the hell, man? Yeah. That's, that's sick. It's weird. It's gross, isn't it? It's not gross, but it's certainly strange. Yes. And I can imagine today like a campaign, you know, like send, just send in, in your, your baby teeth. teeth. Uh, no, thanks. Yeah. Weird. Teeth are gross. Why is that? I don't Even know, in but dreams, they're disgusting. You know what? It, in dreams, when you have a, 
a dream about your teeth falling out. You yeah. know what that means? It's supposedly like you're, you said something you shouldn't have. You're or, lying or you're dishonest yeah, or you yeah. feel like you're lying or about you yourself. Guilt or, or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Guilt Which, about dishonesty. I have a, that's a common dream. It Actually, is. I haven't recently, but like I used to have those a lot. Yeah, what were you lying to yourself about? Oh, I don't know. Who knows? I'm going to grow up to be big and tall. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, so before this whole teeth donation government program, in the 50s and 60s they did this because they were trying to study radiation. When it came to lead, though, they Because they found, were blowing up nuclear bombs. So they're yeah, trying to, so they're like, wait a minute. Is, there, is this affecting people? And they go, well, everyone send in your baby teeth. I read somewhere, too, that, like, the Library of Congress has the largest, like, collection of teeth You want to know anywhere? something weird? Another thing that used to happen in the 50s and 60s, if you went to Harvard uh-huh. and you applied and you got accepted to Harvard, you had to have pictures of yourself taken naked. Why? Get in. They I were, don't believe you. It's 100% true. Google it. We should look into it. This is a true thing that happened. And most of the pictures, they were they were burned when they finally, like, found out about it. But... I, they were trying to do a study about intelligence and body shape and evolution. Okay, it's giving me a safe search warning, first of all, because I typed <laughs> in Harvard naked photos. <laughs> this, this really happened. People in the 50s were, they, everything was fucking weird, man. Well, they were, like, trying to figure stuff out, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a scientific revolution in terms of science at the time. And everything was, like, unfettered. Yeah, Ivy League students used to have to pose for nude photos for science. Yeah, very strange. And everybody was okay with it. They're like, yeah, sure, I'll just just do this without any kind of equivocation. I don't know if you could opt out or not, but it's like they had they had file cabinets and catalogs of thousands and thousands and thousands of people naked. Did they they had to have categorized them by like men and women. I'm right? sure they had like a man, one men, cabinet. women, height, IQ, like what if, oh no, grade what if point it was average. Just a scale of one through ten. <laughs> And there's just one and guy. So the just guy's there. just like the ten drawer. I'm gonna go through the ten drawer of my lunch break. Honestly, whoever did it is that must have been some weird dude that had to shoot and take those pictures. Dude, yeah. it was some major PTSD odd. His yeah. whole life was very strange. That is that dude like collected weird. Reader's Digest and everything. Is very this dude was very strange. What do you mean he collected Reader's Digest? Nobody collected those. You got them and then you threw them away when you were done with them. Did you really? ever? Read? Yeah. Reader's Digest. They were always like these little books. No, I know. I remember reading them. Yeah, and then once you read them, you don't keep them. You throw them I away. guess not. I had stacks of them everywhere. <laughs> Wait, that's your measure for being like weird. Oh yeah, if you collect Reader's Digest and there's stacks of them in your living room, is there you, like a modern day equivalence for this weird scale? Yeah, being on Facebook. Yes, that's everyone's on Facebook. I know. Okay, yeah. so you're weird. You're yeah. weird. All right. So when it came to lead and studying that the teeth, it they found that as lead levels increased, all measures of school performance decreased significantly. Okay, so they were able to take like- So they got all these teeth, and along with the teeth, they basically somehow correlated that to like their primary school education records. Right, so we're talking up into up until like first grade, second grade, yeah, kind yeah. of in that period of time. Yeah. Really developmental time. Exactly. And so all these kids, they have lead exposure, and their grades are just going, just tanking. In fact, a recent study- suggests that at its worst, people born during the peak use of leaded gas in the 60s and 70s may have lost up to seven IQ points. That's like So kind of- here's the thing. Yes, let me put this into perspective for you. Okay, and I to do just, that, we IQ. need to understand IQ. what IQ really is. Okay. So for modern IQ tests, the raw score is transformed into a normal distribution with mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So basically, a perfectly average person will have an IQ of 100. Right. That means that a loss of seven IQ points is a 7% loss of intelligence and cognitive function. Brutal. Like, you think of some people who could definitely use another 7%. Have you ever taken an IQ test? I'm trying to remember if I have. Yeah. I don't remember what I'm, what I'm sure I have, like some stupid online one that probably isn't accurate. Have you ever been actually tested? No, no, I haven't. I would break the charts. Oh yes, I'm Just sure. I'm, I'm sure that she. I'm sure that she would. Yep, my right. genius would astound them. You're not going to ask me if I took an IQ test, are you? You just want to say what number you were. No, go ahead, continue. No, yeah, no, no. Okay. I'm not. Gonna... Hey, Chris, did you take an IQ test ever? I was tested when I was a child and uh-huh. much younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving along. Moving along. Go ahead, move along. No, you don't it's, care to tell it us. It doesn't need. No, that's. Were you above or below a hundred? I. <laughs> 
<laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay, so in the 80s, EPA estimated that the health damages alone from airborne lead cost American society billions each year. Just in terms of productivity and being... <laughs> One billion dollars. Hey, you added that. <laughs> I did because I thought that's what the clip said, and then I listened to it, and it was like one million dollars. And then they're like, "Yeah, that's that's not much." Still and not then he said one hundred billion, <laughs> and I was like, "No, I just want a billion." So yeah, I edited that. Anyways, yeah. So you think about like not only the loss of cumulative intelligence; it's it's really hard to quantify. Imagine if society as a whole had been 7% smarter for the past 100 years since leaded fuel was released. When was leaded fuel banned? It was banned, I'm going to get into that, but 80s and 90s. Oh, really? It took that long? Yes, and that's just the U.S. Wow, okay. So what innovations could have been developed? What political policies could have been implemented differently? What social benefits could have been enacted with a 7% difference on a whole cumulative scale? Where are we? This is Cohog, Brian. Same year, same time. But in this universe, leaded fuel. He never existed, <laughs> which means the dark ages of scientific repression never occurred, and thus humanity is more advanced. <laughs> you sounded like Brian. Did I? Yes. Thank you. Play it again. Really? Play it again. Okay. Listen to your voice. You sound like Brian. Do you remember this episode? Where are we? This is Cohog, Brian. Same year, same time. But in this universe, leaded fuel. He never you sound existed. like Brian. It means the right. dark ages of. You sound like Brian. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Yeah, you sound like a cartoon dog. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. So while we can never know exactly like what could have been, we can look to the past to view the cumulative effects of lead poisoning as a whole. Remember how I mentioned that lead poisoning had been known since Roman times? That was last week's episode. I mentioned yeah. that, so you don't remember that. But I said that. Well. It was, unfortunately, later in the empire that the des that discovery was made. You see, before these findings, R Romans consumed large quantities of lead to sweeten their food and drink. Chris, have you ever tasted lead? No. I feel like I should just... Apparently, it's sweet, though. Yeah, like maybe just lick it. No, I don't think you should. Have you learned nothing? <laughs> A small amount of exposure can't do anything, right? No, it definitely can. <laughs> That's the whole point of this episode. <laughs> Obviously, again, the Romans didn't know this, though. Quote, sheets of lead had been used to sweeten wine. So they just... What? I don't know. Like a sheet of lead, like gold foil. It's lead foil, and you just uh, put that in my wine. They probably use a lead goblet, too. Well, all their water pipes were lead. Oh, no. But if that wasn't worse enough, like bad we enough. We had that here, too. Lead, lead in the water pipes. That was the thing. Yeah, wasn't don't it? talk to Flint, Michigan about that. Yeah. But it's better than putting a sheet of lead in your wine goblet because you're like, I needed a little sweetener. Well, they have an excuse. They didn't know. Caesar. Caesar, I would like more lead. Okay, so they discovered lead in the Roman times. Right. And then it was the collapse of the Roman civilization That's or what? That's just it. It's commonly held that the widespread lead poisoning was one of the main contributors of the fall of the Roman Empire. There you go. With the ruling class having exposure to the most lead because yeah. they can afford to put it in their food and drink. And look what happened. Everybody here got lead poisoning. And then they invented the internet. <laughs> and here we are. Kind of. Yeah. The yeah, collapse so, of no, the American but society. You, you actually, if you look into the Roman Empire and this theory of lead poisoning being a primary contributor to its fall, you know, the the critical thinking and health diminished, and that lead, led to like the crumbling of society that the ruling class well, was managing. I mean, they, if they were had lead pipes, they were really poisoned. I mean they Oh yeah. Luckily, lead is no longer used in American fuels. Strong public pressure led to the Clean Air Act of 1970. When it was passed, the act mandated a massive 90% reduction in three major exhaust emissions. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, and other hydrocarbons, which were mostly unburnt fuel. Ironically, lead wasn't even a concern and wasn't targeted at all. But I, I'm, I'm sitting over here thinking like, well, I really... I like putting leaded race gas in my car. Yeah. And now you're getting dumber. 
I don't know that I should be doing that. I'm like, this smells really good. I like. The yeah, way this it's smells. because you're getting dumber. Damn it. It is. I wonder if the fact that it's used as a sweetener and also you like the smell. Do you think there's a correlation there? There might be. Like, does I, it smell I'm sweet? Sure that, I, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, let me go, Jack. Uh, engineers at GM devised an exhaust system that is now ubiquitous. The catalytic converter. You see, in a theoretically perfect... Comp- cap- Let's try that again. <coughs> you go ahead. In, that was the lead. It caught up to me a little bit. In a theoretically perfect chemical equation, all hydrocarbons would be burned in gasoline combustion. If it was perfect in stoichiometric ratio. Yeah, but we're in the 70s. Everything's carbureted. That ain't happening. Exactly. In reality, these harmful hydrocarbons are unburnt and released into the exhaust. The catalytic converter removes these hydrocarbons and dangerous gases by changing them into other molecules through chemical processes. The first oxidation reaction converts carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide by adding oxygen atoms to CO1. The second oxidation reaction oxidizes unburnt hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons and oxygen are converted to become water and carbon dioxide. Remember, carbon dioxide is what we all exhale. That's perfectly fine. Trees like it. Carbon monoxide will kill you. Yes, not good. Just one oxygen atom away. In addition to the oxidation catalysts, three-way cats use a reduction catalyst. It converts nitrogen oxide into nitrogen by removing oxygen atoms. These reactions make use of the catalyst elements of a platinum and palladium, hence the name catalytic converter, when heated to over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that was it. Thank you, Chris, for staying with me. And we lost him. <laughs> like I said, Did I you never... ever wonder how a catalytic converter worked? No, never. There you go. Now you know. Not, well, yeah. Wonder no more. All I know is that they have platinum in them, and that's why they get cut off. Platinum and palladium. Palladium. Yes. Both of which are metals that you can that are traded publicly as assets. Okay. So, pal- platinum there's like a market. Yeah, there's a market for them, and that's it's very and valuable. So when thefts go around, especially around the area of the studio where we are and record, you, then the market goes up? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know how the thefts, like, I don't know how that affects the market, but I know that those are two very valuable metals. Right. They are. And so the whole, this reaction and chemical process I talked about, the cat needs to be heated up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it passes through it, and all these reactions take place because of those metals. Yes. Yes. The problem... GM found, was that the lead additive and fuel ruined the platinum surfaces of the catalytic converter, rendering it inoperable. So after all of the harm leaded fuel caused and all the deaths associated with it, it was a simple business decision that led to its phase out. Yeah. See what I did there? I yeah, do. Thank you. All new GM vehicles from 1975 onward called for unleaded fuel. New unleaded gasoline pumps began appearing at filling stations nationwide. And by 1985, 60% of all gasoline sold in the U.S. was unleaded. In 1995, leaded fuel accounted for only 0.6% of total gasoline sales. Then, on January 1st, 1996, the Clean Air Act banned the sale of leaded fuel altogether in the U.S. So, I grew up in a time... Where this was prolific. Yeah. Just imagine how more right I would be all the time if I had grown up, you know, 10 years later. It yeah. would be insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? And I cannot imagine. So fuel containing lead so was here, still. Question. Yes. Was anybody held accountable for any of this? No. There's no nothing. No. What are you talking about? Nothing. There was nothing wrong. Are you saying something was wrong, Chris? Why does something like the EPA even exist? <laughs> Why? Why does it exist if not to punish companies? Why don't they? Can you imagine uh, why isn't there the some punitive sort of, measures that would have to make up for the, quote, billions lost per what year? Is the, what is the punitive damage that should be exerted on Standard Oil or Mobile billions. Exxon? Okay, billions. do it. Do it. Why not? Why? Tell me why, Jake. Too big to fail. There you go. There you go. And there's they have their too many fingers in the government. Yeah. There's so, too many lobbyists, too many people that are, who knows what they're getting from ExxonMobil or whatever the case may be, whatever their districts are getting the little earmarks for or whatever. 
But, you know, I never really touched on that billions per year. Instead, number. somebody has to build a raft in their backyard to be able to build a, a domicile in their lake because it's a special lake in the EPA. Oh, yeah, that story. Right? That's what they're doing. <laughs> That's what they're... That yeah, we did. We talked about yeah. that once. Uh, that's old school throwback to some of our old school listeners. Is it's basically some guy had to build. He couldn't build on his land yeah. because it had navigable waters. And right. somebody came out and went, hmm, there's some navigable Protected waters here. You can't plants. build it. So they built a house on a pontoon. So, yeah. hey, yeah. fuck you, EPA. <laughs> yes, so great. they're doing that. But, uh -huh. hey, we're not going to have reparations or punitive damages on these companies that basically destroyed people's lives for, I don't know, 75 years. Right. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Thank Correct. you. Thank yes. you. Well, they did nothing wrong, Chris. They did nothing, nothing wrong. wrong but yeah, you think about the billions number. So, so at, what do you mean billions? Trillions. Right, billions per year. Yeah. In basically loss of what? Revenue because people are 7% more dumb. Yeah. Loss of industry and different innovations that could have come about. The Challenger blew up. I mean, there's all kinds of terrible. That was because of lead. Why not? Why not? Maybe that engineer would have had seven more IQ points. Right. That had. The I mean, that's the whole point of that stupid Brian clip was like, what could have been if we were 7% more smart? You know what we need to talk about at some point, more too? More smart. That's not a Here's smarter. what I want you to look into. This what? is a great episode that you can you can check out and maybe find some information on this. Why did electric cars get quashed in, in like the, the early In the early times. In the early times. Even in the 60s and 70s and 80s, electric cars were just absolutely smashed. I will say part of it is the fact that they just the efficiency wasn't there. I know. The but, battery storage was not there. Yeah, but as you get it, like hydrogen cars, all this different technology was always just absolutely just, kiboshed. Absolutely kiboshed. All it yep. took was like one entrepreneur that just didn't give a fuck, right, Elon, oh, to just yes. do it anyway. And just he just didn't care, didn't have any ties to the government. And kind of we were all laughing at him. I was. I, so You remember when the original Tesla Roadster came out? He took a Lotus Elise chassis and yep. put batteries in it. Yep. And we were all like, man, that's dumb. And Top Gear went and tested it and, like, broke down in the parking lot. Yeah, it was not a good car. Right. It was not a good car. So we were all like, <laughs> this is weird California. One He's thing going that nowhere. I have, I have never liked the cult of Elon where everybody no. just worships everything the man no, does. No, but you can says. see, like, there, it is cool because he has the means. He has, well, he has fuck you money. Yes. He's the richest man in the world. He has fuck you money, and he can just do it. And he doesn't and need. And he does. And he does. And he doesn't need to have, uh, you know, he doesn't need to pay off regulators to make it happen. To his detriment, his fuck you attitude has really hurt Tesla, I think, in, so, in, in some ways. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it I goes. I think it's rare for a person to have that much money and be that successful and still be such a driven like, he could just retire and, like, maybe he'll start a foundation, right? Well, and he can, quote, do that. Being rich doesn't make you an asshole. Right. Oh, I forget where I, where I, <laughs> where I heard this. So being rich doesn't make you an asshole. I think I was listening to Lex Friedman's, Friedman's podcast. As he was talking to, uh, I think, Chamath, who was one of the original. I don't know who that is. He was one of the original founders of Facebook. And, the, and, he, and he asked him, he said, because, and this guy grew up poor, right? He was a programmer, yeah. you know. And helped with Facebook in the very, very early days. Okay. And became phenomenally wealthy, right? He grew up poor. He was abused. And he had a really rough childhood. And he and Lex asked him, he's like, well, how does being rich change you? Well, I hope I'm like quoting all this correctly. I'm kind of paraphrasing. But he just says, being rich doesn't change who you are. It just makes who you are raw. Yeah, I can and, see that. And it's, and it's on display. Because if you, you don't had, need to... You don't need to. Things you don't need to. Much. You can just do what you want when right. you're that rich. When you are a you're billionaire, you're not as concerned about repercussions of being because it doesn't matter. An asshole. No, there, it doesn't matter. You can just do what you want. Right. So you're either going to be to uh, a degree. Yeah, to a degree. So Elon is just who he is, and being richer has allowed him to be more of fuck you money. There's you know? also something to be said about very successful entrepreneurs. Like he probably was an asshole from day one, and was very, you know, entrepreneurs that are that successful. Are like we, we talk about he's Asperger's spectrum, like Probably. he's a weird guy, yeah. right? And a There's, lot of it's these not without hyper intelligent people are, yeah. It's not without some sort of compromise. You, Do you never, know why? You know what? No lead, no lead, no lead in South Africa. I don't know. Sure, no, either. actually, are, are you done with that train? Yeah, I was just gonna, yes, go ahead. Do, do, train of thought. Uh, fuel <laughs> containing lead was still permitted for some off road uses, including aircraft. Racing cars, farm equipment, and marine engines. That same year, what year was this? I got to re rewind. 1995. 
That same year, the World Bank recommended a global phase-out of leaded gasoline. Exceptions were made for large racing organizations. Formula One continued using leaded fuel until 1996, and NASCAR used it up until 2007. The last nation to eliminate leaded fuel from from gasoline. Or regular lead, use. Regular use. Yep. Is, uh, was in July of 2021. Last year. Last wow. summer was Algeria. I was going to say, it's got to be somewhere in Africa. Yeah. That was the last place in the world to use it as a regular sold fuel. So when is all of the, do you know when all of the heavy metals, all the damage that we did is, is filtered away and kind of like reached its... Oh, that's the best part I didn't get to. What is it? It never goes away. Never goes away. It's a naturally occurring element. It doesn't break down, Chris. So it, but it, oh man, really? So it's. Yeah, it just needs to get buried, I guess. Wow. So it doesn't go anywhere. There. Just always there. Yep. Just being, Always was there, but we just kind of. Brought it up and. <laughs> dispersed it. Fire hose it everywhere. To, yeah. So we're basically turning over the field over and over again with a bunch of lead in it. Yeah. And the plants are basically filtering it out and we're eating it and pooping it. And Correct. Then, yeah. yeah. It's just. Going to keep getting dumber. Oh, that's too bad. Today, most gasoline has 10% ethanol added to the gasoline as an anti-knock agent, which was, even before that's, LED's invention, I, what they used. Remember that? Yeah, that's not really why ethanol is in the fuel, though. That is the primary reason. It's, no, the well, the quote-unquote primary reason. But the real reason is that the Iowa Corn Lobby is massive. Okay, well, that's why E85, which I'm going to get to, is a thing. Yeah. But even before our friend William, whatever his face was, invented, quote, or found that lead was a great one, they used just gasoline or uh, ethanol. Yeah, they used it back they then. They used alcohol. Yeah, it's alcohol. That's the way to prevent knock. They right. knew this before, but remember, they couldn't patent that. Right. So they couldn't make money on it. So the problem is, while ethanol is perfectly fine for the environmental and even for humans, it does have some less than desirable attributes. Ethanol? Yes. Ethanol reduces fuel efficiency by approximately 3%. Its volumetric efficiency is lower. So you Correct. need more of it to do yep. things. Yeah, so fuel efficiency is 3% down with, oh, just, um, with just 10. Oh, okay. I was going to say E85 is it's a much, much it's more. It's like 30%. Yes. In addition, alcohol by nature attracts water. Mm -hmm. Moisture in fuel leads to engine damage, rust, and even worse, fuel efficiency. You may see ethanol-free recreation gas at some stations. Non-ox. Yeah. Yes. I actually just filled up with that on the way here. This ethanol-free fuel uses other non-harmful elements for anti-knock properties and does not contain any lead. I was wondering. I was like, wait a minute. No. This doesn't have ethanol. Yeah. So it's still leaded. Have no. you noticed? Have you ever run like 91 oxygen fuel and 91 non-ox in your 911? Mm, usually I do non-ox. I can tell. I can tell the way can that you? it runs. I can hear it. I swear to God, I can hear it. I can hear the way that it's running uh -huh. and idling. I can tell. Uh -huh. I can tell. Because you, it was even right it, after filling up on that 110 leaded race gas. Yeah. That's why you, quote, can tell, <laughs> along with all the butterflies flying around with you. Well, just think about it. What's the, the carburetor has no way of adjusting for the volumetric yeah, efficiency know. of the ethanol. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't know. So you're actually you would getting have less to energy. Jet, basically, to yeah, do it. to do it. There has to be a correlation between the 10% ethanol and like what altitude that approximates, you know what I mean? For rejetting a carburetor. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm sure you could, you know, it's every, I think every 4,000 feet you move a jet size. Right. But I don't know. So what is it, it is something like, ethanol. yeah, 10%. But you can like, set a, you set carburetors up. There's guys that go to the track and run drags and run pure alcohol. Right. And they have alcohol jets. They're oh, just and like they're these, just like garden just giant hogs. Yes. You know, just a big time triple pump, quad pump. Super pump fuel right in there, and then super pump, super pump. Got to be that like a super soaker. No, Ooh, those things are rad. They're back. <laughs> super soakers They're are back. awesome. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> no, so uh, yeah, the the non oxy fuel doesn't contain any lead. Its downside is the increased cost because, like, oh, why wouldn't they just use all, all this? It's stuff? also not subsidized. Oh, mm. oh. Mm. Mm. good point. Yeah, no, but the actual additive they use to reduce knock instead of alcohol is much more expensive. Sure. So it sometimes costs over 30 cents a gallon more. Yeah. One thing I found interesting, though, is that the race gas, we already talked about this, like Sunoco, it still contains lead, 110 octane. This is why it should never be used on a modern car with a catalytic converter, by the way. Or an O2 sensor. Yeah, and it's illegal to be used on the street. Yeah. Ahem, ahem, ahem. <laughs> you can. How can you tell 
that somebody's running leaded gas in their car. Is it the white tips? It's the white tips. It's the, that's got to be just lead. <laughs> that's just lead, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I wonder what that, I was I was thinking about that as I was writing this, because I remember like, oh yeah, you, you get the white kind of exhaust residue. Yeah, super sweet. And what's different about that fuel? It has lead in it. Yeah. So what does that white mean? It's lead. It's probably it's lead. It's probably lead. You should just lick it. No, I will not. It probably tastes sweet. <laughs> it smells good, though. It smells good. <laughs> I've never, I guess, if you ever think of the old vintage mechanics, they're not always the brightest bulbs. They got. They probably they were got, when they went into it. They have got some great stories. Yeah. But. Always a little dim yeah. on the uptake. So, uh, yeah, that one tane octane. That's one ten octane. One tane. One tane. That's one like tane <laughs> octane. <laughs> no, it's like a hip hop group. <laughs> Speaking of octane, we've gone this entire episode without discussing octane itself. Oh God. Okay. So the entire point of lead was, as you recall, to reduce knock. Yes. Right. Octane is simply the unit of measure used to identify a fuel's ability to resist it. To yeah, to resist resist uh, detonation. Many people think of octane itself as like a chemical or a substance, right? It's, it's high octane, Chris, yep. but it's just a measurement, like inches or pounds, yep. right? To confuse things further, there are different standards to octane measurement, and they vary around the world. RON or research octane number is the most common type of octane rating worldwide. It is determined by running the fuel in a test engine with a variable compression ratio under controlled conditions and comparing the results of those for a mixture of isooctane and, and heptane. Jake. What? Come on, man. No, here's what's interesting. The compression ratio of this test engine has actually varied during the test to challenge the fuel's anti-knock tendency. Okay. So it's, an, it's, a, it's a variable compression ratio engine. I wonder how it does that. It's a cam... On the top of the connecting rod. Okay. Yes. As an increase in the compression area, so will increase the chances of knocking. The MON octane number, on the other hand, or motor octane number, is determined at 900 RPM Jake. instead of Jake. 600 RPM. Tell me about cetane. What's cetane? Come on, Google it real quick. How do you even spell that? C-E-T-A-N-E. -E. This is how I know you're lame. You didn't look this up. A colorless liquid hydrocarbon? Yeah, but what is the cetane? Look, look up cetane rating. Put rating in there. I think you made this up. No, I didn't. Minimum cetane rating. Oh, it's diesel. Yeah. Nobody likes diesel. <laughs> I'm not talking about diesel. <laughs> nope. It's octane for diesels, basically. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Anyways, MON is totally different. What's The only reason this is interesting, Chris is the MON of a modern pump gasoline will be about 8 to 12 octane numbers lower than RON. And then there's AKI, which is a Jake. third measurement. Nobody cares. Really? Nobody cares. Because did you know that in Europe, the octane numbers are totally different? Yes. That's when you open up Do you your... know why? Because they measure it at a different RPM than, than they do in America. <laughs> <laughs> That's, shit. That's I don't interesting care. to me. I wrote this entire thing <laughs> at the end because this is very interesting. The AKI number is the average of the two. Oh, okay. You're so mean. You're so, <laughs> I'm just defeated over here. I was excited. I don't even care. I'm done. Yeah, you're fine. All done. That's it. That's What's the episode. It? What? Why we're, not, I not? we're not interested. We had too much lead as a kid. I don't I need, like smart talk. That's you. That's, well, you're just rattling, prattling on about numbers. <laughs> I don't like numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is uh, last point on this is if you, when you go to get gas tonight on your way home, you'll see the big like headline number. Yep. That's the RON. Yep. Below it, it says calculated, blah, blah, blah. And there's a different number. Yep. For us American idiots. Yeah. And it says like AKI RON divided by MON times yep. two. Yep. So that's the AKI, which is the average of the two methods. They just use RON in like England and Germany and stuff, right? They just No, use... they use the AKI. Oh, they do use You didn't what? listen to any of it. I know that's because I fell asleep. What's the what do we use then? We use RON. Do we hear? Yes. Okay, so I had it backwards. While the main number you and I see on pumps in the U.S. is RON, the AKI number is usually four to six octane numbers lower than elsewhere in the world for the same fuel. Gotcha. Yeah. So there you have it. Critical. Yes. Critical information. You needed to know that. You needed to know. You know, I'm just, I'm sorry it was a little too heavy for you. Oh, Jake. That was very, very good. Did you know that when you go up in elevation, it doesn't matter if you run premium fuel or not? Don't waste your money. 
Because mm. the air is less dense, your compression ratio goes down quite a bit. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you, so can you run. don't have as much risk yeah, of when, Like when you go up into like 10, 12,000 feet and there's gas station, it's like 85, 85, 85. Those are your three choices. Yeah. yeah I these, always thought that. There's not like, a why ton is of, that a thing? I've put that fuel in my 911 and it doesn't even care. I did. And then mine died outside of Indy. Ooh. Well, maybe you got some bad fuel. Remember that? No. You were with. Oh, yeah, but that gas station was seriously sketchy. Yeah. That gas station was full of gambling and pornography. And lot lizards. And lot lizards. That's where I got my uh, I no lot lizards yes, ideas. Yes, exactly. From. You're not allowed to have any lot lizards there. That place was... <laughs> no good fuel. <laughs> would, would visit again. Very interesting. Oh, yeah? Five out of five for interest. Yes. Zero out of ten for bathroom. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this entire episode about lead, Thomas Migley was the guy that basically invented it and brought it about, and... When did a he lot die? of this bad stuff is kind of coming back to him. When did he die? Do we know? Yeah, I could look it up quick. I'm just wondering how long he lived. He had, I wonder what he died of. What's oh, right, decade? because of all the lead exposure. Yeah, what's, I hope he Thomas died Thomas Migley, he... 1944. Okay, so he didn't live that long. Was he 60, 70? 55. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> he was only 50. What is, what is his cause of death, does it say? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Hold on. I'm going to guess um, cancer. Life and death. Polio? Lead didn't cause polio, did it? Can you Wait. Oh, my God. It gets so much better. Okay, what are In we In 1940, got? at the age of 51, Migley contracted polio, which left him severely disabled. He devised an elaborate system of ropes and pulleys to lift himself out of bed. In 1944, he became entangled in his own device <laughs> and died of strangulation. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's karma for you right there. The guy that killed millions and sacrificed billions of dollars died. Do you want to, do you, do you realize well, this whole episode was only the half of it? What? What do you mean? Thomas Migley, this guy, yeah. as if we didn't attribute enough death to him and he wasn't terrible What enough, else did he do? He was also the inventor okay. of Freon. <laughs> you know, the other substance that we had to outlaw because it was destroying the ozone layer? Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. Well, hey, at least, I mean. That is a whole story for another day. Though. Air conditioning. Yeah. Let's, that's what I want to he do is hear you prattle on about the difference between <laughs> R12 and R134. Well, These the, are numbers. The, I don't like numbers. The molecules on the R12 numbers bind the. very exciting. Bind to ozone at, at 85 degrees and it, it, the, the sun's photons shine through the hole and give Not little Johnny everything. cancer. Not can be boobs and explosions and like... What do you mean boobs? I don't know. I'm just trying to lower <laughs> it to your level. Oh, yes yes, 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 yes. Just remember I didn't tell you what my IQ was. On that note, we will see you guys next week. 88. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>